Hello guys, welcome to PW Skills Tech. In this video, we are going to discuss about the roadmap to become a data scientist in 2023. So if you are a fresher or an experienced professional and want to make a transition into the analytics industry and solve some amazing AI use cases, then this roadmap is specifically for you. So without wasting any time, let's go ahead and discuss about the roadmap. So to start, the first thing in this specific roadmap is to learn about a programming language. Again, with respect to data science, you can learn various programming languages like Python, R, Java, C++. But my suggestion would be always start with Python programming language. But why? Python has abundant number of open source libraries and packages that can actually help you to implement a lot of things just by writing some lines of code. Even two tech giants, Google and Facebook, have come up with these two open source libraries like TensorFlow and PyTorch, which will actually help you to develop a lot of amazing deep learning applications. So in the future, any kind of research that will be happening with respect to deep learning is also compatible with Python. And more importantly, Python is a versatile programming language. It can help you in actually implementing web applications, desktop app applications, mobile app development, and more importantly, it will definitely be useful in machine learning and deep learning, where actually it will help you to create amazing applications. So in short, if you are learning a Python programming language, you will be able to gain a lot of skill sets. So guys, after you are familiar with Python programming language, the next thing that you really need to learn is statistics. Now, as you know, guys, data speaks a lot and you definitely require some tools, some concepts, some statistical analysis to extract that information from the data. And that is where statistics will be useful. In statistics, we will definitely learn with respect to two different types. One is descriptive statistics and one is inferential statistics. In descriptive statistics, we get to know more about the data where we can deep dive and we can take out some information. So here we will be learning about bar chart, we'll be learning about histograms, we'll be learning about various distribution of the data, wherein the main aim is to basically summarize the data and take out information from that. In the second type, that is inferential statistics, we take a sample of the data and we try to make assumptions or conclusions of the population data. So there are different, different tests that we specifically need to learn in the inferential statistics like Z-test, T-test, Chi-square test, ANOVA test. So once you are familiar with all these concepts, you will be able to extract important information from the data and will be able to represent it to the stakeholders. So guys, once you're familiar with Python programming language and statistics, the next thing that you should definitely learn is about databases. Now in databases, you really need to focus on two types of databases. One is a SQL database and the other one is a NoSQL database. In case of a SQL database, you can probably learn MySQL or SQL Server. In case of a NoSQL database, you can definitely go ahead with MongoDB. Now it's time you can probably jump into machine learning. Now in machine learning, you need to learn about somewhere around 20 to 22 algorithms, which will be based on two different types. That is classification problem statement and regression problem statement. Obviously, when we talk about the types of machine learning algorithms, there are two types. One is supervised machine learning algorithm. The other one is unsupervised machine learning algorithm. So once you are familiar with all these algorithms, once you understand the theoretical intuition, you should also try to implement end-to-end -end machine learning projects, which will be super important for your career. After you cover up machine learning algorithm, then you probably need to jump into the deep learning part. In deep learning, we specifically say three important things that you really need to learn. One is about artificial neural network. The second one is somewhere about convolution neural network. And the third one is something called as recurrent neural network. Through these algorithms, you will be familiar with projects that are related to computer vision and natural language processing. Once you are familiar with all these things, definitely I would say implement many, many end-to-end -end projects as you can. Why? So in industry, whenever you see any kind of business use cases, they are mostly related to computer vision and natural language processing. So at the end of the day, once you complete deep learning part, you will definitely be familiar with computer vision and natural language processing. So guys, this is just a learning roadmap wherein we discussed about what we really need to learn step by step to become a data scientist. 
But as you all know, AI is evolving a lot. A lot of new things are coming up every day. A lot of research are basically happening. A lot of problem statements has been solved, right? So with respect to this, as an AI practitioner, it is also our duty to make sure that we are up to date with all these new things. So keep on learning continuously and be up to date with all the recent research that are probably happening. If I give you an example, I hope everybody has heard about ChatGPT, right? ChatGPT is a kind of large language model and it is built on generative AI. And if I probably see right now, a lot of startups are specifically working on generative AI. So if you are familiar with this particular concept, you can also build your own large language model with the help of libraries such as LangChain. So it is super, super necessary that you need to stay up to date with all the recent research that is basically happening and through which you will also be able to implement in your companies for solving a specific use cases. So once you complete this entire learning roadmap, there are two important points which I really want to convey. One for a fresher and one for an experienced professional who wants to make a transition into the data analytics industry. For a fresher, it is super important that you implement a lot of end-to-end -end projects and try to participate in some kind of internships from various companies. And this you should definitely do it from the third year itself. Why? Because companies, when they actually check out your profile and if you have implemented and worked in every module of a life cycle of a data science project, they will definitely consider your profile. So don't think that a fresher cannot make a transition into the data analytics industry. Definitely they can if you have the proper amount of projects that you have implemented along with the internships that you have done. One common question asked by an experienced professional saying that, Krish, I've been working in this particular technology and in this domain. How can I probably make a transition into the data analytics industry if I'm starting data science now? For this, don't have this confusion anymore, guys, because in implementing the data science project, the most important thing is having domain knowledge. So as an experienced professional, you have that specific domain knowledge because that is from your past experience itself. Just to practice how to implement those projects, try to do a proof of concept project in your previous company, in your previous project. Let's say that you want to probably automate something which can actually save the resources constraint in your company itself. Let's say you want to uh, implement something with the help of AI that can actually reduce the cost. That can be a perfect POC project to start with. So definitely have this particular practice in your current project or in your previous organization and try to write down that specific experience in your resume. So through this, all these things you can also explain to the interviewer and how you have actually implemented those projects. So that can be an amazing proof of concept project for you and it can definitely help you out in the transition phase. So guys, this was the entire roadmap of becoming a data scientist in 2023. I hope you like this specific video. This was it for my side. I'll see you all in the next video. Have a great day. Thank you one and all. Take care. Bye-bye.